on World News Tonight this Monday. History made on a small piece of land in Asia. In Hong Kong, a century and a half of British rule comes to an end. And China takes over. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Reporting tonight from Hong Kong. Good evening from China. Here in Hong Kong, where it is now Tuesday morning, six and a half million people are just waking up in a Chinese city. The British have gone. It was an extraordinary last day of British rule, 156 years after the British Navy first came to this part of the Chinese coast. This most dynamic center in all of Asia has been returned to Chinese sovereignty. It was an incredibly dramatic day, made even more so by seeing the Chinese military in Hong Kong for the first time. At first light this morning, several thousand soldiers began crossing the frontier, arriving in the outskirts of Hong Kong, a strange sight for so many people here. It was a dramatic morning and evening because we saw the British in all their splendor here for the last time. In the final hours when Hong Kong was still British, it was very British. The 28th and final governor who pushed so hard for greater democracy reminded the new Chinese rulers of their agreement. Now, Hong Kong people are to run Hong Kong. That is the promise, and that is the unshakable destiny. And then the rain. Done. A torrential rain. But on this occasion, the likes of which the world will not see again, it seemed only to heighten the drama. Speaking for the British monarchy, which had ruled 800 million people only 50 years ago, the Prince of Wales. The eyes of the world are on Hong Kong today. I wish you all a successful transition and a prosperous and peaceful future. It had all the power and glory that once was empire. And then over Hong Kong's harbor, there was a massive fireworks display. In the final moments of British rule, after months of the most detailed negotiation about how these ceremonies would be equally shared, the most powerful symbols of change. No leader of China has come to Hong Kong in 156 years. From China's point of view, the long history of shame and occupation was finally over. The Chinese president promised the world that Hong Kong would maintain a high degree of autonomy, that Hong Kong would be ruled by the people of Hong Kong. And then very quickly, almost in haste, it was over. Prince Charles and the last governor with his family went into the night on the Royal Yacht Britannia. It is said that before long, Britannia will be sold or scrapped. Like empire, it is too much to maintain on the eve of another century. In the brand new convention center, the Chinese premier, Li Peng, who helped to crush the pro-democracy movement in China, swore in Hong Kong's new chief executive. The Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright, in the name of supporting democracy, did not attend. On the balcony of Hong Kong's Legislative Council, some of the most committed Hong Kong Democrats who lost their seats in the legislature at the whim of China held the first pro-democracy demonstration in the new Hong Kong. There had been weeks of speculation as to how China would react in these first moments of sovereignty. They did not interfere. The arrival of Chinese troops here in Hong Kong is particularly symbolic. They certainly express the new Chinese sovereignty, but they also represent a people's army that turned on the people some years ago when they demanded democracy. There will actually be a smaller Chinese contingent here than the British had. But this is China now, and the world is watching like a hawk to see how China behaves. 
Here's ABC's Jim Laurie. Peter, it was a startling contrast. Chinese troops got an enormous send-off across the border in the town of Shenzhen, while in Hong Kong's new territories, the government organized smaller groups to provide a welcome. For in Hong Kong, this arrival has been a contentious issue. It was the sight that caused both apprehension and pride. It's a demonstration of China's sovereignty over the territory. That reflects the official view as well, a perfectly natural deployment, nothing to worry about. For others, though, it was too many troops too soon and too provocative. People in Hong Kong um, um, are very afraid, afraid of that because it is a symbol of um, an unres irrational force. The troops arrived at the same time as democracy activists were screening tapes of the crackdown eight years ago at Beijing's Tiananmen Square. The Chinese military is very much aware of its yes. poor reputation. They've got new uniforms and they've learned a few phrases of English to spruce up their image. And across the border today, before they left, a top-ranking general told the soldiers they must respect Hong Kong's social system, love the people, and do everything according to law. And by agreement, the army will be largely confined to the barracks vacated by British troops. And if China keeps its pledge that the people of Hong Kong will run things here, today's deployment may be one of the few times China will show off its military muscle. Peter? We'll have more on this historic day in just a moment. And yes, that is torrential rain out there at Glen. We'll do some reporting tonight on what this means in the rest of China. And we'll, of course, have some of the day's other news. The president's attempt to compromise with Republicans on taxes and what boxing officials may do about Mike Tyson. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Brought to you by Toyota. My partner. Right. My reputation. I deliver pizzas in it. What? I got a car on a ladder all the time. Toyota Corolla. It's our first car together. The ocean is always here. What can you count on? In the past 29 years, over 23 million people answered, My Corolla. The 1997 Toyota Corolla, the most trusted car in the world. Power Corolla! It was the first night of our vacation. Between my aching back and all the excitement, I just couldn't get to sleep. My mind was racing. Should I take something? How would I feel in the morning? Well, I tried some Tylenol PM. That's the name I can trust. The Tylenol PM stopped my pain. It helped me sleep. Good decision. Next morning, we walked along the beach. Before breakfast. Pretty romantic. Rest easy. It's Tylenol PM. Now connoisseurs can savor two delicacies in one delicious serving. Introducing new Fancy Feast Filet and Pâté. Extraordinary. New Fancy Feast Filet and Pâté. Good taste is easy to recognize. A callus makes you feel like you're walking on stones. Dr. Scholl's Advanced Pain Relief Callus Removers with Cushlin. Get rid of the pain by getting rid of the callus. We guarantee it. Try Dr. Scholl's Callus Removers with Cushlin today. The return of Hong Kong to China is an event that affects vast numbers of people. On the Chinese mainland, of course, six and a half million here in Hong Kong, and as many as 50 million Chinese elsewhere in the world who are affected at the very least emotionally. We get a touch of the Hong Kong feeling from ABC's Mark Lifke. Peter, on a roof in the central business district, a group of artists marked the handover in a unique way. Couples who had never met were handcuffed to one another to symbolize Hong Kong and China learning to live together. It's about people uh, coming together, learning about each other's cultures. Togetherness was the theme on the streets as well, even as the crowds grew thicker. Crowds are happy, we are happy, everybody's happy. When roads were closed for security reasons, celebrations moved underground. In fact, the subways were kept running all night long to accommodate the biggest party in Hong Kong's history. Among the travelers, a Hong Kong family that had returned from America just for the occasion. We feel happy that Hong Kong go back to China because this is our land. Back up above, families basked in the glow of their new pro-Chinese decorations. 
It was, for many here, a party more than a hundred years in the making, as they counted down to a new era. Red flags and Chinese costumes took center stage. The Union Jack was history. Some danced through the night. Some stayed glued to television screens. And for the night market vendors, it was a chance for a little extra profit. T-shirt salesman Tom Chu says he's full of pride, but even on an important night like this, he has to worry about business, which hasn't been so good lately. He hopes tomorrow will be a better day. Peter? There are so many ways to judge how important this transfer of power was to people, but to the best of our knowledge, only in Beijing, the Chinese capital, was there a countdown clock. The Chinese have been preparing to return to Hong Kong for many years. This week, they were counting the minutes. ABC's Deborah Wong is there. This was China's main event, a carefully stage-managed, made-for-TV extravaganza for 100,000 performers and invited guests on Tiananmen Square. The handover ceremony from Hong Kong was there to be seen on big screens, and all 100,000 counted down. Here, perhaps more than anywhere, they cheered the beginning of Chinese sovereignty, the end of what the Chinese call their long humiliation. This means the 100-year-old shame of our country is being washed away, says this student. It means the Chinese people are stronger. I'm so excited, says this young man. It's as if I'm seeing a loved one who has been away for so long. Throughout Beijing, there were smaller celebrations. Those not invited to the square watched the fireworks from the streets. Others celebrated quietly at home. For China, this has been a long road, says Sun Hucheng. Millions of Chinese people have been looking forward to this day. Hong Kong's handover may be the best thing to happen to China in decades. A relatively poor country inheriting one of the world's wealthiest economies. And the Chinese government wants to make sure people know who to thank. The handover has been the centerpiece of a relentless patriotic campaign, and there are those who say the government has gone overboard. <laughs> to make this kind of loud propaganda every day, says journalist Dai Ching, has turned into a ridiculous situation. And the authorities have also tried to carefully manage the euphoria. When tens of thousands of uninvited guests came to Tiananmen Square, they were removed by police. The party didn't end until the Chinese flag went up over the square at dawn, and the Chinese people woke up to a country that is bigger than it was the day before. Deborah Wong, ABC News, Beijing. Later in the broadcast tonight, we'll take you back to China. We were there on the weekend, and some of what we saw was, well, amazing. But in a moment, Forrest Sawyer in New York will have some of the day's other news. Tonight on Nightline, it's not every day your flag, your military, and your government change without a shot being fired. But how long will the Chinese tolerate dissent? A day in the life of Hong Kong, followed by political... Just before our final story, a review of the lead, which of course has been the end of British rule here in Hong Kong. The British governor and Prince Charles have sailed out of Victoria Harbor, and the Chinese have now taken control. Convoys of their troops have crossed the frontier and are now taking up residence in their Hong Kong barracks. So finally this evening, how we spent our weekend. It's many years ago now since we first went to the frontier between Hong Kong and the Chinese mainland. There was a lot of tension in those days. Today you can get right into China by train in less than an hour. So we took the train to Shenzhen. And so did a lot of other people. A lot of other people. Thousands and thousands of Hong Kong Chinese do this all the time. They even go to buy groceries. It is cheaper in China than Hong Kong. And of course, this was a holiday weekend, time to visit relatives. We forgot about that. We have to say that in the customs hall, it was pretty clear we were on the communist side of the border. It was, don't sit here, don't stand there, don't read your paper here, wait here, okay. And you can come in to photograph, you just can't bring your camera. Okay. Luckily, someone had a home video camera, and we got by with that for a while. Our very first reaction to Shenzhen was tough police. Though generally, they didn't notice us so much with a tourist camera. 
with this one exception. I'm not doing anything. Okay. Our second reaction to Shenzhen, wow. Ten years ago, this was a tiny fishing village, and look at it now. 1,400 miles from Beijing, this is the laboratory for China's experiment with capitalism. They built this whole place in a little over 10 years. It is rapidly becoming the largest manufacturing zone in the world. That and banking run from some of the most modern office buildings anywhere. And where do they get the money to do all this? It came through Hong Kong. Maybe this is why people think Hong Kong will change China instead of the other way around. You can buy almost anything here. We thought rather than miss anything, we'd buy a better video camera. <laughs> Ten years ago in China, it didn't matter how much money you had, there was hardly anything to buy. Lunch. Another example of the changing China. The restaurant was privately owned by a Hong Kong man. People here can afford to eat out. There is so much poverty in parts of China that working in Shenzhen, though hard, has enormous rewards. Hi. Including the cell phone. How does the Communist Party control information when so many people are able to share information? Just one last stop before we leave. It was the late Chinese leader Deng Xiaoping's idea, this whole business of Shenzhen. To get rich is glorious, he said. Good place for a picture. Nice one for the wallet. Very nice with the grandchild. Send this home to the wife, maybe. Great picture with the grandson. Not bad with the foreigner, either. That is our report on World News tonight. It was quite a weekend. We'll be here again tomorrow as Hong Kong experiences its first full day of Chinese rule. Yes, that's thunder. We'll take a look at what this all means to the vital relationship between China and the United States. So I hope you'll join us. More on Nightline later this evening. I'm Peter Jennings. Good night from Hong Kong. After a history-making day, what will tomorrow really bring for its people and you? Peter Jennings reports from Hong Kong on ABC's World News Tonight. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. ABC News, now always on.